Hi folks, Mr. Long here. I'm going to do a screencast on how to graph trig functions. So what we're going to look at here is how to graph this in radians. So uh, y equals a sine k bracket x minus p plus q, where x is the angle. Um, and this thing here, by the way, all together is what we call the angle function. That's, that's how the angle arm rotates around the circle, right? So over here, there's our circle. So we start with the angle arm and then it rotates around the circle and then that changes the Y value, okay? Because the arm can rotate starting at different locations and then at different speeds. Okay, so anyway, um, we did this last year in grade 11 and this year we're gonna do the same thing again, except this year we're graphing in radians. So really, that's the only thing that changes. Just a quick review, A is the amplitude which is the radius of our circle. So if you go to our circle right there, you can see the amplitude is that distance from there to there. And then K is the speed of rotation. So it's how quickly the, um, how quickly the arm on the angle uh, rotates. Um, so, and by the way, that relates to T, the period, how long it takes or the wavelength of the trig curve. And there's our formula, k times t is always 2 pi. Last year it was k times t was always um, 360. P is a horizontal shift or what we call a phase shift. So that's where the natural cycle starts. So sine always starts on the vertical middle or the midline. And then a positive sine curve will go up and then down. A negative sine curve will go down and then up. Okay. And that brings us to Q, which is that midline or the vertical shift. It can also be called the horizontal axis, but it's the vertical middle of the sine curve. Okay, so, oh, by the way, P, the phase shift, is the distance that the natural cycle starts away from the y-axis. Okay, and you'll notice that it's x minus P, so it's always the opposite of what's in the sine, uh, of the sine of, of in front of P. Okay, so let's go ahead now and do a couple of examples. So here's our first example right here. Our first example is a equals three, k equals one, p equals zero, and q equals negative five. So the way I would write that is y equals 3 sine 1 bracket x minus 0 minus 5. Then, of course, um, we don't need to write multiplication by 1. We don't need to write in adding and subtracting of 0. So in fact, what that really looks like is y equals 3 sine x minus 5. All right, so now let's go over this a equals 3. That's the radius. Um, actually, let's put, let's put q on it first, the midline. Okay, the midline is negative 5. And then we know the radius or the amplitude is... Three. So that means it goes up 3 and down 3. So the maximum value, y max, is negative, th negative 5 plus 3, which is going to be at negative 2. And y minimum is going to be at negative 5 minus 3, which is negative 8. And in this case, um, what I do is I just draw a sine curve. It's a positive sine curve, so I just draw the sine curve there between those values, and I know that P is where the cycle starts, and in this case, P is zero. And I know that K is one, which means it's going to normal speed of rotation, and K times T is two pi. So T equals two pi over one, T equals two pi. So that would make the end of the cycle, x end is going to be equal to the start, 0, plus 2 pi, which is 2 pi. Okay, so that, folks, is um, your curve. Okay, So you know this, the period length from here 
to here is 2 pi. Okay, has a maximum of negative 2 and a minimum of negative 8. All right, let's try another example. Here's example two. Okay, so in this case, um, I've got the example up here on the right side, right there. So there's no number in front of the sign, which means we've got a value of one. K is three, which means it's rotating three times as fast. And then this plus pi by six means it's a negative phase shift of pi by six. There's no Q value out there, so that makes Q worth zero. Okay, that makes Q worth zero. So now um, let's go ahead and sketch that. Here we go. So on our circle, the vertical middle of the circle is Q equals zero. The radius or the amplitude is equal to, you can see there's no number, oh, whoops, no number in front, so that's one, three, negative pi by six, and Q equals zero. So uh, Q, Q is zero, and then we go up by one, and down by one, so that makes Y maximum equal to one, Y minimum equal to negative one, and it's a positive sine curve, so I'll just draw the sine curve there. It's not a very good sine curve. Okay, and what I know is that, whoops, it's easy. The p-value is negative pi by 6. That means it starts um, that far, pi by 6 to the left. I know that the period t is, um, sorry, k times, k times t is 2 pi, and k is 3, so 3t three equals 2 pi, and t equals 2 pi over three. So t is two pi over three. So now I need to know the coordinates of the the end value of x, the end of one cycle. Well that's going to be the starting value, negative pi by six, plus the period length, which is two pi over three. So negative pi by six plus four pi by six again um, or you can use a calculator for this stuff. So that's just going to be pi by 2. Okay, that's the ending value here. Okay, so again, y max up here is going to be 1. Y min down here is negative 1, and q is 0. And we know our start is negative pi by 6, and our ending value is pi by 2. That's where the cycle ends, where the wave ends. Okay, and the total period is 2 pi over 3. So again, process is the same. Draw the circle, draw the appropriate curve, add the information. We have one more example to do. Okay, in our third example, we have absolutely everything going on. So let's look at our third example, I'll maybe zoom in on this part first. So the A value that is shown is negative 4, which means it's a vertical reflection, so it's an upside down sine curve. The K value is 1 half, so it's going half as fast. I think you should be pretty good at figuring out that that's 4 pi. The phase shift is the opposite of what's in the bracket, so it's 2 pi by 3, that means to the right. 
and Q, the vertical midline, is 5. Okay, so now we can use take that information and we can graph it. There we go. Okay, so now we're going to graph this. And again, the middle of the the middle of the circle is Q, the midline, and that is at five. The amplitude is four, negative four, four, so it goes up four and down four. So the maximum Y value is going to be five plus four, which is nine. The minimum value is going to be 5 minus 4, which is 1. That's the y minimum. I know it's a negative sine curve, so I'll draw a negative sine curve. There, it's vertically reflected. I know that the p value, the starting x value, is p equals 2 pi over 3. I know that the period is 4 pi because it's rotating half as fast, and then the x end equals, what's the x end? The x end is the start, 2 pi by 3 plus 4 pi, which is going to equal, what's 4 pi worth in terms of thirds? 12 pi over 3. So that makes it 14 pi over 3 is where it ends. Okay, 14 pi over 3. So 14 pi over 3 there. And start. The start value is 2 pi over 3. And we've got our y max and our y min. Okay, and the vertical middle is 5. Right, so that's really what you want to be able to end up with in your graph is the max, the vertical, the y maximum, the y minimum, the starting x value, and the ending x value, right? And then the shape is either opening, it's either a negative sine curve or a sine curve. All right, so hopefully that helped. Uh, don't hesitate to go over these videos again just to make sure you understand things. I know that's quite a bit to go over in 12 or 13 minutes, um, but again, connect it back to last year and you should be fine. Have a great day.